we'll we'll give a maybe like one or two more minutes and then we'll we'll kick off just so people will get a chance to sign on. And Jenny, just so as you know, I did hear you. Um, so, but you're very quiet and I can only see the top of your head. But it's nice to speak to you. Loud and clear on my end as well. Hello. Hey, Tracy. How you doing? Great. Thank you. You look very well. Oh, I just finished mowing about an acre and a half. <laughs> Hey, it must be nice to have an acre and a half to mow. Well, not to mow. <laughs> yeah, no, not to mow. Yeah, no, the mowing bit probably sucks. Hey, it's decent weather for it, though. Windy, though. Yeah, yeah. My wife just biked eight miles from D.C. to our house in Alexandria in the wind and uh, is less pleased. <laughs> That's good. But, yeah, there she goes. It looks like we've got someone who's called it on a phone, Ben. I'll admit them too. Okay. Um, who's calling it on the phone, if we can ask? Uh, it's my Johnson with m &L. Oh, good. Nice to have you. Well, I think, Joe, like, you know, we give them two minutes. I think that's fair. So. All right. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sure that there'll be some other folks who'll join us along the way. Um, so... Uh, Ben's going to be your kind of your MC today. I guess I'm just kind of master of ceremonies, but um, I just want to welcome everybody uh, to the uh, the Spring Vanpool Council session. I'm just going to take a couple of seconds here uh, to yak on boringly about the uh, mobility councils. Uh, this is one of our three mobility councils. We have the Vanpool, we have the Hispanic, and we also have the employer. Um, these are three councils that were put together because of OmniRide's strategic plan goals to kind of have more community engagement. Um, the Vanpool Council has been the most robust. Um, and I, I do want to remind everyone that you know, the, the, the greatest ideas that we've had come from this group and they don't just come from us. So as we go along here, please do not sit on your hands, um, put, uh, put your hands up, ask questions, answer questions. Um, first thing, I just got to thank you for your, uh, your good work. Um, you know, I'm not going to dwell too much on how much of a dumpster fire the last two and a half years have been because we're all intimately acquainted with that. Um, but I, I, I want to thank you guys for weathering the storm and what a storm it has been. You know, we are here to be, you know, your good faith partners to provide that financial support where we can and to provide much more than that. You know, you guys have hopefully come to depend on this program for finding out about opportunities, you know, learning best practices. You know, obviously, we provided all the, the, the PPE and the, you know, the stimulus payments and all this that and the other where we could and we will continue to do um what we can i just want to kind of conclude by um you know just saying to everyone that it's extremely important more now more than ever for you guys to communicate with us as much as uh, much as possible the the return to office is happening you know we have noticed in the vanpool program and on the buses in the last six to eight weeks that more folks are going back to the office but how are they going back to the office are they going back five days a week no they're not are they going back two three days a week yeah is what a vanpool is going to mean potentially going to change a little bit and you might see more vanpools that might have you know nine or ten people in a seven passenger van because they all only go in three days a week and i think that w that you guys have already figured this out we're going to have to be dynamic here because what it means to be a van pool is changing somewhat um and so we want to work with you guys to to be plugged into what we can do to help how we can change things how we can support you how we can make sure that you know van pooling is as important a part of the regional mobility landscape for the next 20 years as it has been in the last 20 years um and so uh with that i'll uh, i'll turn it over to ben but thank you so much for uh, attending and it's wonderful to see each and every one of you hey guys um Honestly, like this is like a great opportunity to just kind of have a touch point with every one of you guys and, you know, kind of build this community. And it's always just like a good meeting. Um, 
been through kind of pretty crappy time with, uh, you know, COVID. And I know it's like kind of dumped your ridership. It's kind of dumped your, your van pulls on the road, stuff like that. And, you know, folks have had to make hard choices about do I stay in this business or do I kind of eke out an existence? And, you know, the fact that you guys are here means that you're, you're well and on your way. Um, it, we have lost Bonnie. Um, it's not that I'm an ex murderer or Joe's an ex murderer. It's that she just wanted to be a stay at home mom with her new, her, her two year old kid. And, you know, I can't, I can't fault her for that. Claire is a brilliant, beautiful girl. And, you know, she's, she's fun to listen to and stuff. So Bonnie's made that choice. So we are hiring for that position. Um, in that kind of vein, you know, we, we are a big team of three and now we're two. So if and when you can, please be more proactive about getting your kind of roster updates, your vehicle updates into us so that we can give you good and timely updates. If you kind of hold it all in there, and then give us 30, there's going to be a bit of a time log for that because we don't have the bandwidth to split that as, as we used to. So, you know, I think you guys will probably, hopefully be getting a lot of roster updates and maybe applications in. Um, so, you know, the sooner the better so that we can just like, manage this kind of fireman hose coming coming down because it's been honestly we've gotten a lot more uptick in applications we've gotten a lot more uptick in ride match requests and that's been great um so you know long may it continue um a question I have actually for you guys is how is slugging doing? Are your are your vans able to pick up slugs? Does it exist? Like where does it exist? Like this is something we always get asked by like the the folks at the Commonwealth level, like so a, a level above me. Where where is slugging? Because it's always something that we don't really have a good, good metrics on, but like people are interested. And so like you guys are definitely the ones to ask. So like, does anyone want to speak to slugging or could speak to slugging? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Sharon Arrington from uh, Cool Runnings LLC. Regarding slugging, I let, before I even get to slugging, my van pool, I have two vans. What I've been getting and which may be forcing me out of the business because some of my riders are starting to go back. I have one rider that has been going up and I've allowed him to drive to use the, the van by himself. I He doesn't pick up any slugs, so he drives local and stuff. So he works with the Department of Defense. Then now that folks are getting ready to go back, I am hearing a whole lot of different stuff. Now, you're only going back one day a week, most of my riders. So for the month of April, since they've been going back, I've been allowing them to use the van without charge, basically, because, I mean, it takes a while for Wumata, the thing to kick in, and I'm not sure what's going on. Because they, some, they told me that uh, their agency has said, since they're only teleworking, one day a week, so that's four days a month or six max, they will not be paying a monthly uh, van pool. So they will not be getting a monthly van pool subsidy. And they're saying, okay, if we're not getting it, we will not be coming out of our pockets for it. And I am kind of confused because I'm saying, okay, if there is gonna be a daily, what is the rate? 
And I don't understand how some government agency are still paying monthly and some are totally refusing to pay, which is fine. So if that be the case, I know I'm gonna pull my van because where I am, my van is located, it's 120 miles to the Pentagon, one way. There is no way in God's green earth am I gonna run my van for one, person at VA, I'm not scared to call agent, call agencies out, has told me that their rep told them that they will only be getting $50. I'm like, okay, I would like to see you find a right to go from a hundred, for 120 miles for 50, $12, 50 a day, but it won't be my van. So I want to know what's going on out there because as writers are coming back, there is a mixed messages. Some, I don't know, should I be charging per day? And what should I be charging? If um, that was, it's, it's a bunch, a mixed thing. I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting it. It's. Yeah, so there's, and I think Joe will probably tag, tag in on this. It's one of those things where, each agency has their own kind of policy, right? But there is a minimum policy that your van pool goes in X, Y, Z number of days, and that being the majority of the work days. So typically uh, a heavy work day month is 22, so, you know, you're looking at 11 to 10 to 9. And if you're not meeting that, these agencies have every right to say, no, we're not going to give you the commuter benefit, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a big, that's a big thing for van pulling, 100%, right? Yeah. So I think... Um, and I, I mean, I don't know, like, I think there has to be a, maybe a, a, a rate for full time and maybe a rate for half time mm -hmm. set. And I don't, I, I absolutely don't know that would pass muster. It'd probably be from facility to facility, but you might need to think about that kind of circumstance because if you're going to say that, hey, this person who travels 20, 22 days gets charged the same amount as someone who travels nine days, mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I don't know that that's going to be okay no. for your, right. for, for you, you know? Yeah, no, you know, I, as first time, you remember, everyone is charged the same. So now that if everyone is only going up for, say, as I said, four days for the month, what is the rate that you charge them? What is the daily rate? There is there um, one agency, VA said, oh, uh, the IRS says it's supposed to be $17. I'm like, mm, okay, where is that written? So, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not clear what, I has a business and I've done my research and stuff and I've gone and I've looked at, I cannot find where it says, because if I'm going to be charging 12, say $12 or $17 for each day they ride, that is going to be the standard for everyone. So everyone is going to pay 17, but is that what the rate is supposed to be? And how is that going to work with my business? It takes more than seven. Years. There's a lot of unknowns basically i'm not expecting to get say for what we know things are not the way they are now we're talking pre-covid that is done with now we're all going to be teleworking that is fine but the consist inconsistency of some agency saying we're only going to pay five dollars and the next agency said they're going to pay ten that doesn't work yeah, so, and I, I mean, that, that's something that I'll get to you, Tracy. Um, that, that's something we can't really control, right? Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the hard truth of the matter is 
it, it really is agency to agency. And that's just kind of how the federal government has, has structured that. Um, yeah. I would say you need to... I would like to hear from other folks how they do it and how are they dealing with that? If they're dealing with the same thing and how do they do, I, you know, how do they deal with it and stuff? Because yes, each agency is different and stuff. So what are other uh, operators hearing and how are you dealing with it, with this telework posture that we are now in? Because nobody's going up full time. So how are you dealing with it? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question to kind of open it up to to other folks. Um, Tracy, do, do you have something to, to say to that? Uh, yes, thanks. Thanks for uh, allowing me to speak. Um, that's a good question. It's a good point she brought up, uh, ma'am. Um, well, the agency doesn't dictate how much you charge per month. Say, for instance, you're charging 280. You say, okay. And you prorate it. If it's 20 days, I, you got to do the math, and they only go in in 10 days. You prorate it for those days if you can afford to do that. I've been doing it. Uh, I got a slew of emails of people that's coming back. They asked me, What is their rate going to be? I said, Give me your number of days. But I, I let them know ahead of time that, hey, uh, be aware that we're recruiting more riders. So if you're only paying this amount, uh, when the band gets a number of riders, you either pay out your pocket because you still got to commute and you still got the traffic. Uh, but the agency shouldn't be denying them their benefit because that's a benefit that the government giving them. If they go in three days a week, they still got to go to the office. Um, but it, my, the agencies that I deal with, they're not really pinging like that. Um, the, again, it depends on the agency. And I've even told riders that, hey, if you're not riding for a month, I'm not going to pay money back. You're paying it back. So you, it's up to you to calculate the number of days you're going to work. I can't sit here and say, okay, watch you get on the van and get off the van. You need to tell me how many days you're coming in. You tell your agency how many days you're going in. Because I got, right before COVID hit, uh, I'm not going to call that agency name. I got hit with a, with, uh, a whole uh, two months worth of commuter benefits for like, 10 riders <laughs> and they actually sent me to the, uh, their, their comptroller or finance person, sent me an email and said, hey, you will pay, here's the website, to pay IRS back, US treasurer. So when I got hit like that, I said, I'm gonna watch this because I'm not paying money back anymore. I, I tell the riders I'm not paying it back. If you wanna ride, you pay the price. Out of your pocket if you have to. And I got some managers that are telling riders, Tracy don't wanna hear this thing that you can only pay this amount. I said, hey, that's your call. And he said, if you got to pay out your pocket, pay out your pocket because when the van fills back up, if the government goes back full time, they're, they're going to be without a van. <laughs> they got to find another way to commute. That's all I So in that vein, um, is there a, a space where there's a half month fare for someone who's going in two or three times a week? Or is it just you're reserving your seat, it costs as much, bam. Like, I, I guess, like, I wanna know, like, what you guys as owner operators are kind of approaching this situation like, right? Because there's a lot of hybrid, hybrid work now. And I think that's kind of there to stay for sure. And so how do you approach uh, a government a government agency saying like, well, you know, you were coming in 20 days a week and it cost this, but now you're only coming in 10, so it should cost this. Like, what are your guys' approach to that? Speak freely. Uh, let's go with Kevin. Yeah, so when when uh, I've got I run into that situation, I, like as the gentleman beforehand said, uh, I sort of prorate as it is needed. Um, you know, when they sign a 
you know, a monthly contract, they sign the monthly contract. Uh, if they come and they say, hey, look, I'm only driving half time, half, you know, halfway. Now there's a minimum amount that you got to keep on the van, to keep it, you know, uh, viable, not only to be a uh, authorized mode of transportation, but also a viable, you know, viable for the business. So I can't have a, you know, uh, four people being, you know, working half time. But what I have done is I've taken some of my vans that like have six, seven riders on them. Uh, I've increased the riders where I can say, okay, I've only got, you know, four riders that are part time, so I can, I can put a couple okay. more of them that are part time. It's like a general. So, um... so that's, that's the way I work. Thank you. Um, uh, it shows up as Barbie. Oh, there you are. So how do you handle that situation of people kind of being like, not actually in work, but like kind of partially in work. Yeah, I have uh, two employees from DOE, and you know they asked me. The writers asked me what is my daily rate because DOE will not pay. Hey, Gen Genevieve, Genevieve, in you're, here. You're really, you're really quiet. Can you maybe go closer to the the mic so we can hear you? Hey, Ben, I got a statement to make if, if uh, she's done. I'm not sure if we can hear what she's saying, but. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a new company, Coyote Vans. <clears throat> I currently have four vans running, but they're all brand new. Uh, you know, with the current price of vehicles and gas and everything else, I, I make it you know, very clear up front that the cost of to ride my van is 280. Uh, there's no negotiation. If you ride one day, if you ride 30 days, it's just what it is. Um, you know, so my riders are basically uh, all, you know, government employees, they know that. And, you know, if, if they adjust their days accordingly, if they have to in the system, um, you know, one day is $280 or 20 days is $13, I think, and 50 cents. So, uh, you know, with a new company starting up like mine and brand new vehicles that are costing 40,000 plus in the cost of gas, insurance, and you, you name it, it's, uh, it's not viable to have, at least for me, to have people fluctuating their, with their pain every month. So I have a set fee right, right up front and everybody knows that and now that's what we pay, so. Right, uh, okay, Don, Don, thanks for saying that, but that's the same thing with, with my company. As I said, I have two vans, my vans are new and everyone knows the, the, the amounts per month. Yeah. So, but now that I'm saying, that's where I'm running the problem. Now that they're only going back only one day's and stuff. So I'm thinking, I'm telling them, hey, my price is what it was, right? Which is what I've been telling them. Say, the price is what it was pre COVID. I haven't changed. My van is a Honda and a Toyota. Gas is from 120 miles one way is a lot, and plus two ways. So I can't, I'm, my business is not viable with me getting you telling me that the government is only going to give you $25 and that's what you're going to give me. No, you will not be giving me that. You will not be riding the van because then I'll look other riders. I am not this. When they try to tell you that the government is saying, hey, this is what they should get because of IRS regulation. I'm like, well, let the IRS talk with me because it's my business. The IRS, but the the government or anyone can tell me that I should be charging you $25. So it, you know, I'm just trying to 
figure this out, but I know it's not viable. I will not be I, able to. I think the, the big thing that all of you owner operators are going to have to deal with is that the IRS isn't going to give. What is a legal van pool means 50% occupancy. You need four people on a van. So if you have a bunch of 15 passenger vans, but you only have six people, you're not going to qualify for my program, any program that will pay you a subsidy. And, and that, that kind of continues into this question of like, will you oversubscribe your van? That's, that's so that the thing. so that you apps so that you have that kind of eligibility. Yeah, I agree. And, and Ben, I did that on one of my vans. Uh, so I knew the the people going in yeah. uh, were on a very a set schedule. Um, they're they're you know work for government. Their their work days are very unique. Um, so mm -hmm. instead of having you know a Honda Odyssey, you know comfortably sits in the seat eight. So I made it nine, and because I knew everybody didn't go in every day, but or eight people, but uh, so it worked out very well. The van continued to run almost two, three days a week. Um, but, you know, again, most of my, all of my riders right now are, are going to Coast Guard headquarters. So it's, it's a very, very unique situation for me. But um, yeah, if I have to over, overbook my vans, I will. Uh, but, if, you know, right now I have a good amount of people starting to come back and start to fill the seats. So it's, it's, it's getting better, at least for, you know, for the Coast Guard headquarters piece, but how do you how do you handle that kind of you, you, that that's more kind of a thing to manage, right? Yeah, um, because it's not just like oh hey, it's, show up at the Camara lot, you know, go up and you know I'll take care of your you know your your maintenance and stuff like that, like. When you have to manage rosters, how do you do that? So we, we do it all by text groups. So every day, and it's, you know, they, they just get used to it. Every night I send out a text. I ask them who's in. Everybody replies back who's going in for the day. And we do that every night. Um, some van pools, I know they do it on Sundays, asking who's going in for the week. Um, with, about, with my riders, you, they never know if they're coming in that day or the next day. So it's, it's literally an everyday thing for us. Uh, you know, I have four text groups going. It's just me managing that. I sit at, I have to sit at my computer every night, and I fill out a calendar, and I put in who's in, and that's how I track. But I'm, I'm sure there's better ways to do it. Um, I've been riding the van pools for almost seven years, so other, I've been with other companies. Um, some will have like a, uh, a monthly calendar in the van you got to fill out or fill out your name, who wrote in that day. Um, but I, to me, I find the text groups work out better, at least now, because I only have four vans. If I had more than that. I could see it becoming more of a, an issue, uh, more time consuming, but. Um, yeah, I kind of, I, I, in your, in, in your future, I feel like you're going to be oversubscribed from, oh, yeah. <laughs> from, from just like hybrid work schedules. Right. So you're going to necessarily need to kind of figure this out, but um, I'll, yeah, Kevin, what. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, you're going to have, and I've got like 12 vans. So it's difficult to try to manage all these vans doing, you know, doing as you're saying with like texts when you get more than four or so. But the, the, the pieces is that, and I, I'd like to address the lady that mentioned about the IRS. To me, when you have, a contract with a person to ride a van on a monthly basis. It's sort of like saying, I pay my electric bill on a monthly basis, just because I don't use, you know, or, or I guess electric bill may not be the, the right uh, analogy, but, you know, it, it, you've signed a contract for a monthly thing. So they should not be coming. And I would say, I, I don't want to talk to the IRS. I've told my riders that, you sign a monthly contract, you sign up for the subsidy, you author, the subsidy is just a form of payment to me. So if you use the subsidy to pay your bill, that's fine. The IRS 
or your agency tells you, hey, you're only going to get 25 bucks, um, you still owe me the remainder. And if the agency, I don't have anything to do with the agency or talking to the IRS. So I, that's the way that I'm looking at it because, you know, that's, it, they, they get a fee for a service. I provide a service. I provide you a van pool to get from point A to point B. Whether or not you choose to take it from point A to point B is irrelevant to me. Um, so that's the way I, that's the way I look at it is you, I, I get my service, my payment for my service I provide in the discussion. I'm not, and that's, that would be my argument to the IRS. Go after, you know, Mr. Ryder uh, because he's falsifying his claim for the subsidy. Not, I'm not falsifying the claim for a subsidy. Right. That's that's exa- that's how I t- that's how I told them I'm dealing with it. Say, look, you signed the contract, and the thing is too with with the writers is I have set writers. They all work different places and stuff, and they're mostly government writers. And this van that is in it's a brand new van that I got, and they signed a contract, and then COVID, so and then it, everything stopped. And now that they're starting back, those are the writers that are saying, hey, they're only paying. So I've told them, say, look, it's monthly. I don't know daily. That's it. I am not telling you, you put what day you're going up. One year, when you fill out your thing with your company and whatever they give you, I don't have nothing to do with that. But this is what I need from you in order to ride my van. That's... And that's... You know, when you get like my my vans are mostly paid off for the most part. So when I um, when somebody comes to me and tells me, hey, I've only got, you know, I can only ride 10 days. Can I you know, or I can only ride half of the month? I'm a little bit more amenable to taking half the fare as opposed to you guys that have brand new vans that need to pay all the monthly fees because, you know, as you get into that. But I did. I ran into it and you know, previously where I've had to do that. And sometimes it's, you either got a van that you're paying for it regardless and you've got no riders and it's sitting in a commuter lot um, okay. or you get some of the fare by allowing folks to ride half time. So some things to think about. Um, um, so just to be, be crystal clear, like there is this, IRS thing that has been suspended and that's what you guys are kind of in um if they decide to kind of say no it's over with you will need 50 percent occupancy for at least four in a, in a seven passenger van blah 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 um I I would um, I would wager there's going to be more over rostering than not because of the hybrid work schedule. And ben, I wasn't talking about vans that were less than the fifty percent occupancy. I, I'm talking about you know I'm not trying to say, and I agree that if you don't have the vans that are fifty percent occupancy, then they don't qualify the program. And, you know, yeah, if you claim those, the IRS should come after you for that. But as long as you've got that 50% occupancy and folks are willing to be, you know, a pay in the right amount, um, then the uh, telling an employee or telling one of the writers, you know, I'm sorry that you're going to still pay me the monthly fare. That's the piece I was talking about, not, not whether or not a van pool qualifies. Yeah, no, 100%. It, it, it was mostly like, you know, need to qualify, but also you're going to, like going forward, what we've heard is you're going to need to oversubscribe in some instances. Like you have a seven, but you got 10 people rostered because that's just gonna be hybrid work culture. And that, it sounds easy. 
it sounds easy until all 10 people need to be in the van on one day. So we need to, we need to be con cognizant of that. And also I think, how, how do you guys view, how do you guys view like oversubscribing vans because I think, I, I think that is actually probably what, like where we're going to get yeah I am not for that because as, because as I said my vans now have is full my both vans I have is full so coming from so far and I manage my roster and everything so and they we have good communication but still sometimes people things change so if I oversubscribe and I get there one day, we get there one day and somebody that didn't remember to tell us, I don't think I'm going to do that because then what am I going to do with that person that shows up in the van already have seven people. So I don't like, the over, I'm not going to oversubscribe for my vans. That's, I would rather wait until I build a roster of four and then I'll purchase another van. That's how I've scaled up my business. Yeah. Not over yeah. So Ben, what, I, what I've been planning is if I do decide to overfill, which I haven't quite yet, um, I always have a backup van. So the backup van is not part of your, the, your program unless I get a fill, but that's the van I would use if I overfilled the van and 10 riders did show up that day, we would take both vans. And, uh, you know, it'd, it'd just be a hit on the company for me, at least for gas and the mileage for that day. But that's what I'm thinking I would, how I would handle that if I really over, overfilled a minivan with eight, nine, 10 people, which I, I don't think I would get to that point. Um, but if I had an influx of people all of a sudden say, hey, I need rides to headquarters. And, you know, instead of buying another $40,000 van to fill it, I just used a backup van for that day or two that that happens. And it, the backup van to me is a used van that, you know, low cost that just kind of sits the lot for emergencies. But um that's how I envision it if I, if I get to that point, but. And Don, uh, you brought up a good point too. I, I have to have a backup van. Now he mentioned that those backup vans are not in the program. Shouldn't they be? Well, what I mean is, what I mean is it's just, it's just, it's a part of my company. It's not registered to anything else. I mean, I'm not trying to claim, um, you know, with, with Ben's company, you know, Ben's group or anything. It's just a van that I have for backup. Uh, in case a van breaks down, like my van got hit in the parking lot by the snow plows and, you know, I had to use my backup van at the time to, to make up the difference. Um, but okay. I don't try to claim. Uh, Don, yeah. Don, that should be in our program. And we would, <laughs> we would, we would. We would well, we would. it is now because I got, I got four new riders or new riders. <laughs> yeah. we, right now we I don't would. have a backup van. <laughs> but we but like that you. mileage, but yeah, yeah. You're, okay. you're absolutely spot on. Um, uh, Genevieve, you got your hand up. Can you hear me? Genevieve, you're, you're very quiet. No, I, I'm having problems. Can you hear me? Genevieve, we're going to move on. Um, Kevin. Yes. Can hear you. Go on. Oh, I'm sorry. I just forgot to lower my hand. I didn't have anything else. Ben, can you hear me? This is Linda. We can. We'll, we'll, we'll get to you after. Okay. Kevin. Ben, I forgot to lower my hand. Sorry. Oh, so you don't, you don't have anything? I don't have anything, no. Okay. Linda. 
Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I don't have, I'm fortunate, I don't have the problem that um, some of you folks are dealing with because all of my clientele are returning, uh, they're essential, and they're going in three days a week. And that seems to be the norm, possibly for, uh, for um, Navy Yard. Um, so right now, most of my vans are doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Some are doing Monday through Thursday. Um, so uh, I, I did lose some routes. Uh, they ended up being backup vans uh, because these people just, they just left. And uh, so um, I took a hit on that. I lost four out of my fleet. So I have essentially four backup vans. Um, to answer your question about slugging, uh, my husband slugs to the Pentagon, and it is abundant. Uh, he is, uh, he can, some days he's got to go in a little later uh, to work by like 830, and he's still able to, to get a ride. So, um, he, but I did notice also one day, one of my vans for HUD, um, they, everybody called out sick. And so there was just one guy, and he was able to pick up slugs and go in. So uh, the slug line seems to be going back, and there there does seem to be some type of normalcy uh, returning. So I can I can hope. I just uh, I guess like most of you all, I just kind of you know weathered the storm just to wait and see what happens. And uh, so yeah, I'm fortunate though. My client base is primarily Navy Yard and. Uh, I understand from their commander that he wants them to start going back possibly four days a week. So, and, you know, it, and I, I know COVID's a bad thing, so please don't take this the wrong way, but I kind of feel like some people are like, well, the novelty is wearing off. So now it's back to, you know, back to the basics, if you will. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, not to put too fine a point on it, um, the Pentagon is reinstituting their parking requirements. Yes. Next week. So, yeah, if you you know, like that that that's a pinch point, right? That's like where we kind of fill the void. Absolutely. And um, it's going to be a pretty big void. I I suspect. So if you have Pentagon contacts or just want to just like do it, like do it, it it's going to be a thing because Pentagon has been able to park no matter who you are, it's fine and you're good, but now you're going to be pretty restricted and it's an opportunity for the employee. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's that's where that's where it exists. So um can I add something to that? Not to interject and I apologize for that. Um go ahead. Go I, don't, ahead. I don't I don't I don't know if this is legal to do or not, but um, you know, to help each other out. You know, I don't have any vans to the Pentagon, and if I got any calls for Pentagon riders, I have no problem saying, "Hey, right," and you know, Tracy, whomever. You know, I, I, that I'm fine with that. Um, you know, if it means helping each other out, you know, that would be um, a really good thing. I, I, I'm not opposed to that. I, I know I was doing that for MNL at one time for Belvoir, but. Um, you know, I I understand Belvoir isn't doing hardly anything. So, um, at any They're rate, not doing I have, anything. yeah. So, you know, if um, if if anybody wants, you know, I I have no problem directing them to you if you want to let me know your routes. And if not, I understand that as well. But um, you know, to help each other out and to weather the storm, I'm 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 game to do it if you guys are. Yeah, and uh, I like that too, Linda, because uh, I try to do that as well. Uh, if I don't have a route, someone calls me, and I'll try to, if I know, like Don got a route going to the Coast Guard and DHS, if I know Tony got a route. But I, you say you had a van going to the Washington Navy Yard. I had two riders that just left 
three riders that just left and they need vans to the Washington Navy Yard. I can refer them to you as well. That that would uh, that would be great. I don't. I have. Uh, I got two hundred eight, uh, three, six ten, and uh, possibly a six thirty, and possibly soon Route Seventeen. I just got a call for that. So um, if you guys have any, um, I'm getting a lot of DOE. I don't have that. If anybody has DOE, um, I can refer uh, them those writers to you. Well, I don't have them as writers, but they're potential customers. But uh, it, I'm kind of leery about starting other vans, you know, um, because I just don't know what's going to happen, right? So I hate to buy another van, like Don said. You know, you're you're, you're dropping forty grand on these vehicles, and uh, you know, and then all of a sudden you you don't have the ridership anymore, and now you're left with you know a forty thousand dollar van just sitting there. So and I have that. I got that going right now. So. You know, if we could help each other out, I that would be great. Because I also don't feel Ben and it, it, this kind of is well, it's a dovetail to uh, to a problem. But um, I noticed on GW Ride Connect when folks reach out to me, you know, I get the email and I contact them. A lot of times, I find that um, they block me, <laughs> and I'm like, well, wait a minute, I I don't understand, you know. I, I send out their information or I, I receive their information and I'm texting them or calling them and I get blocked. Or what I do get is, wow, you were the last one on the list. So my question is, is it because my name is Van Busters and V, it's alphabetical, and so therefore I'm at the bottom of the list? It's like they go through everybody else and oh, no, it's just who you're dealing with. It's just who oh, uh, okay. I, okay. I, get, I didn't like, know if there was we, a we get, we get thing blocked. Or we get blocked more than not. <laughs> we, have a, we have a thing to make sure that we actually have okay. been heard. Okay. Um, because, you know, we have a hard deadline, and if you miss it, you yeah. trip over your feet and get yeah. smashed on the shins, I guess. Um, so, yeah, no, it, yeah, we, if we don't hear back from people, we, but yes, um, what your experience is very much on point, and so we do it. But, um, and you know, we have not that many minutes um, for our meeting. And I just, I just want to say, I'm happy to see all of you. I'm happy to hear from all of you. Um, if there's anything else, please speak forth. We will take it and go forth. But you know, yeah, this is your last chance. Can I? Can can I? <laughs> I'm I'm just taking over this meeting, aren't I? I have another issue that came up with my HUD van that just started and it's um, system parking is where they park. And so my van gets to work the other day. They were there previously. They had an account and the guy says you can't come in the garage without $848. And so I, I they called me and said, I, we can't park the van. They're not going to renew our pass unless they get $848 from you. It's like a daggone shakedown. And so they took the van out of the garage, tried to park it somewhere else. There was nowhere to park. They ended up coming back there. Long story short, I paid that $848. I, I, I didn't have a choice. There was nowhere for them to park. And they were like, we got to get to work. So I, I paid it. And I said, okay, and here your next payment is not due until June. And you know, we go back to our regular parking payments every month. I'm not asking for the money back. I just is anybody else getting shit down like this like me? Because I mean, they literally put me up against a wall. And these people are like, and they're supervisors for HUD. They're like, we've got to get into to work. We got to park this vehicle. There's nowhere to park it. You know, they can't drive around the city all day looking for even street park. There was nothing. 
There was, there was nothing they could do. And they were literally at their wit's end and it was 9.15 and they're like, we're not in the office yet. So I didn't have a choice. I just didn't, is anybody else experiencing that? <laughs> or was I the only sucker? I do have a uh, comment for the group and no, I don't I haven't experienced that parking issue, but has there, or is there a, any type of app out there as far as <clears throat> instead of sending text messages every night, is there an accountability app that anybody's using that they'd use to track their, their members when they ride? I thought that'd be kind of a cool idea if something was out there, uh, an app that everybody had that they could just log into and uh, for their attendance every day. I didn't know if that was anything that's been worked on or is currently out there. What, what my folks about use this. They do group texts and I'm CC'd on it. So that's how that works. And the old fashioned calendar, writing it all down. Then I go to the vans and collect them every month. Yeah. But, um, but they all have their own group text and it, it can't make it to whatever they CC me on it. So they all have their own. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's a group contact. They'll do it that way. All the vans. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, it works I, best I, for me. I'm sorry, Linda. I just, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of apps out there. I'm trying to pull them up. I have two of them that we use. Uh, let's see here. Man, all these apps on my phone, I got to find it. And what's unique about it is that when they log on, I get an email and tell, tells me the day they're writing. Uh, excuse me for my eyesight. I'm 55 years old now. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll get it in a second. I'll, I'll put it in the chat. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, everyone. I I appreciate your contribution. Like this is how we know what's going on with the Van Pool community in Northern Virginia. If it wasn't for you, we'd just be kind of walking like this right now. And we're not. And that's because this, uh, I'll call it odd community. You know, you got Tracy Bell, you got Don, you got Genevieve. Linda, but you got all these people who may not be exactly friends because, you know, you want to make as much hay as you can. But in these certain circumstances, you're, you're, you're great. And you're saying like, here, this is what I'm, I'm experiencing. This is what I kind of have. And that's the community. And I think the community is way better than the competing against each other. Like you can't, you know, like, yes, you are competing against each other. That's fine, blah, blah, blah. But I think the community is way better because there's, just stuff in the Ample Alliance. There's just stuff that you can be a part of with this kind of community vibe. And so, yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm happy to see Don. I'm happy to see Linda, Sharon, Kevin, Genevieve. Mr. Tracy Bell, like this has been like a long kind of process to build this kind of community. And I was I, I, like, literally, honestly, to all of you guys, thank you. Because this wasn't a guaranteed thing and we, we have it. And I think um, we can count ourselves lucky. We'll go on with the program. 
I will see you guys in like Thanksgiving, Christmas region for the other of this, but you guys have been great. Any other questions? Thanks, I appreciate these, Ben. These are very informative. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Thank you guys for hijacking the meeting. Hey, Ben, appreciate it. It's Tony. It's time to go. Appreciate everything. Thank you, Tony. Um, I've been taking everything in, man. Really appreciate it. Very educational. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys just keep continuing to do the grind and we'll be good. You know, it's on it's on you guys, honestly, to to do the grind, like get get those vans. Yeah, I mean, we we're here to support you. We can do ride matching, we can do anything in our realm but like continue kind of doing that hustle. I appreciate you all. Thank all right. You. I appreciate you as well. Hey, Great. one last thing. Um, Stafford County uh, sent out a survey um, how to improve business in the community. Uh, I don't know if you guys got that, but I'm gonna reply to it and say, hey, you're not taking care of the van pools, the van pool companies. We got all these vans parked in the parking lot and Stafford County is not doing nothing for us. Well, Except hit them. <laughs> Do as such, because I mean, van pulling is big, especially in your realm. And so should be better. So yes, um, yeah. Yeah, I will put something out throw something out real quick. I started putting cameras in all my vans, uh, front and rear, uh, um, you know, travel cameras, I guess. Is anybody else using those in their vans for safety reasons or just for, just to see a track? Um, I use bouncy trackers in all my vans as well that track the mileage and, and uh, how fast the van's going, hard stops, um, two good tools. But these new cameras I have in are, uh, you can use, they will actually record when the van is sitting still in a commuter lot. Um, so I hear there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, um, what do you call it? Catalytic converter thefts going on. And, um, you know, my van, my big van got hit by the snow plow and they didn't even leave a note. They just took off. So now anyway, uh, I started buying these. They seem to work out really well. Uh, they're again, record front and back in the vehicles parked and driving. And if I have an accident, um, it's seven days of recording. So it's, it's I'd be curious to see if it pays off in the future, but uh, at least that's what I started doing in my vans. Where, where did you get those from anyway, those recorders? Is that something you bought off of Amazon? Yeah, I, I used ThinkWire, the ThinkWire uh, F200 Pro. It's about $169 on Amazon. Um, yeah. Super easy to install and uh, they come with GPS. So you have to get the exact location. Um, 10, it's 1080p, which is it's good. Not it's not 4K. You, you can definitely spend money to get the the more uh, nicer cameras at 4K resolution. But um, I, I like to know that if my vans are an accident, what really happened. Um, and again, with those cameras and the bouncy trackers, I can I can get the full picture of what the van is doing at all times. Uh, I have like just a matic which um, allows me to see where the van is at all times also the speed it's going you know and you pay for that every year but um it's good yeah I like, no, I, but i, I like I the agree. camera idea definitely yeah. oh thank yeah. you yeah. all ben, right i appreciate it i'm gonna log off uh thank you very much and i'll see you next time uh for our next yeah. meeting i appreciate it thank you everybody uh, hey have a good one thank hey you. guys it just Thank you so much for being a part of this community. You know, you could just bugger off, but you didn't. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks to you guys, man. You guys are awesome. You, Denise. And uh, I'll see you Joe, later. Joe is good sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm the new Joe, so I'm going to be less and less good. Don't be jealous now. That would be All a thank right. you to Ciao. Denise for processing my applications. Thank you, Denise. She did a lot of work for me. Holy smokes. Thank you. No problem. I'll send you a bill later. <laughs> I'll be looking for it. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay. Bye, everyone. Have a good bye -bye. evening. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Denise. No problem. You're welcome. Great. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Denise. Bye -bye. Oh, yeah. Okay. All righty. Okay.